If you are worried you have Lyme disease, or just like the outdoors, and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases, research, medicine, health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert, and uh, welcome to this episode of Outbreak News Interviews. And this is the first episode in the Parasites 101 series in about three weeks. Uh, due to a number of different circumstances to include a hurricane and illnesses, uh, we just have been unable to record a show until tonight. But we're back, and we're going to look at the protozoan parasite Dientamoeba fragilis today. And joining me, of course, is parasitology teacher and author of Parasites, Tales of Humanity's Most Unwelcome Guest, Rosemary Drizdell. Hi, Rosemary. It's been a little while, and welcome back. Hi, Robert. Nice to be back. Now, Dientamoeba fragilis is a parasite that we've touched on in the past in our most recent uh, interview on pinworm. That's right. And um, despite the name of this genus, this protozoa is, in fact, not an amoeba. Can you explain that? Yes, Dientamoeba is actually a flagellate. It looks like an amoeba. But you probably know the flagellates are so called because they have flagella, or the singular of that would be flagellum. These are long, sort of whip like appendages that help them to move around. And diantamoeba doesn't actually have one that you can see, but it does have the internal structures for flagella. So it was initially thought to be an amoeba, but in fact it's a flagellate. Yeah. It, globally, where is this parasite found? It's found in all human populations. So anywhere on Earth where there are humans, you'll find Diantamoeba. Now, I remember many years ago, it was up in the air whether this was a pathogenic organism or not. However, today mm -hmm. I think we're pretty sure it is a pathogen, correct? Yes, there's still a lot of debate about Diantamoeba. Uh, most labs now look for it, especially in children under the age of 16. It's thought to be more significant in that age group. But you'll still see, if you look at the literature, there's still a lot of debate about whether it's a pathogen or not a pathogen, or perhaps whether there might be some strains that are more likely to cause illness than others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, if somebody's infected with dientamoeba, uh, what are the symptoms that you would see? The most common symptoms we see, see are things like abdominal pain, perhaps some diarrhea. This can be quite prolonged. There may be loss of appetite and nausea. Of course, weight loss goes along with that and fatigue. Perhaps it comes and goes a little bit. A lot of, of the uh, parasitic protozoa cause a diarrhea that tends to come and go, so you think you're getting better, and then in the, your symptoms get worse again. Okay, let's uh, uh, get a word from our sponsor, Global Lyme Diagnostics. For many years, we have been waiting for a Lyme disease test that actually works. After decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at the Medical Center at Virginia Commonwealth University, a breakthrough test has been developed, the GLD test recently launched by Global Lyme Diagnostics, is based on Dr. Marconi's science. For more information, visit glymedx.com, that's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com, or email at info at glymedx.com. Um, Rosemary, how would somebody like me or you become infected with dientamoeba? Well, we're not entirely sure. Diantamoeba's life cycle doesn't, as far as we know, contain a cyst stage. And this is the stage in most of the protozoa that is resistant to the environment. So it's what survives so that it can be alive in water, contaminated water if we drink it. 
But diatomoeba doesn't have that cyst stage, at least we've never seen it in humans. So we only have a trophozoite stage or a vegetative stage, which is more fragile, probably doesn't survive the stomach acid. So there's probably a vehicle of some kind that gets it into our intestines, and that may be pinworm, it's a, a parasite that we've talked about before. There's quite a bit of evidence that pinworm does carry diontamoeba, and there are other parasites known in animals that are transmitted in this way, so we know that that can happen. But it hasn't been proven, still unproven, after many years of theori theorizing about that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Rosemary, can you talk about the diagnosis of diantamoeba and the treatment? There is no rapid test or screening test for diantamoeba, so we have to actually look for the protozoa in the stool specimen. Usually that would entail doing a, a bit of a concentrate, washing the stool specimen and putting some on a slide and then staining it. So we're looking for something that takes up the stain. We can recognize diantamoeba because it has typical features. And sorry, what was the second half of your question again? The treatment of diantamoeba. Treatment, yes, there are a couple of drugs that are available. The, the first drug usually chosen is iodoquinol, but there are several other choices if for some reason that can't be used or if it doesn't work right away. Well, Rosemary, if we don't really know how we get infected by diantamoeba, how do you prevent it? The best way to prevent it is make sure that you're drinking clean water and washing your hands, washing your hands. We can't say too clearly that good hand hygiene is very, very important yeah. in avoiding this kind of infection. Okay, so we're really going down to the basics for this one. Mm, that's right. Okay, and lastly, is there any interesting stories about this protozoa you'd like to share? Well, it's not a terribly romantic parasite, but <laughs> I did look at its history and I discovered that it was, it was discovered, we think, by a fellow by the name of Charles Wenyon back in 1909. He was actually looking at his own stool under the microscope. So presumably he had some symptoms and he was trying to figure out what was causing them. But his discovery of diantamoeba is really just a footnote in his story. He lived at an exciting time for parasitologists. He was involved in everything. At that time, they were still trying to figure out the life cycle of malaria. Sleeping sickness had killed thousands of people in Africa, and the research on this was intense. And far from being a specialist, he was involved in all of it. So he was one of the great scientists of his time. In fact, he wrote a book about protozoology, which became the, the reference on the subject and that held that honor for many years, a famous book about protozoa. Okay, just a hint of romance there. It's just a bit. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, again, thank you very much, Rosemary, for your time and expertise, and I'll see you next week.